I don't think that's in the plans. I don't think that's what they want. The, the issue of photos is always complicated. More often than not, it creates problems and uh, just opens all kinds of Pandora boxes for them. So um, I don't think they have that in their plans, at least not for now. I don't know. I don't know if there are any specific parameters of my mission or if there was any specific thing like a mission. I think I just had an idea with whoever, I don't know, to do something like this. I uh, appeared and then it's going with the flow. I don't think there was any idea about where it's going to take or, you know, specific plan. Or, or at least I don't feel so. So no, I don't know. <laughs> Go with the flow. Uh, no, this is not Dale. Not not the voice of Dale. All the voices in Mari's channel are generated. They are not um, real people. Uh, yes, I do believe so. Now, it's not just that I believe so, but I do have a memory, uh, a vague memory of the, one of the conversations with them uh, where this was mentioned, that, um, that we met with Varu at the academy, somewhere there, where I was actually, I don't know now if it was said that I was giving some kind of a lecture or something, or something, something. I, I had to do with that academy. Okay, and then we met Zvaru there, and uh, yeah, we sort of made some sort of a plan <laughs> with this. So, yeah, I do believe that. And I was told by someone, now I don't remember by whom, that this happened. Well, this is a very, very, very good question. Very good question. I like this question and I was thinking about it a little bit and no, I think that I am more valuable at least for now here than if I was on the ship and that's because, well first of all I was already there and I was doing what I was doing. There was a reason why I decided to do, to do it now here. So I trust that reason and also I believe, I have to come closer now because it's going to be loud, you know I, be I believe that uh, there are, even though there are few people on the ship, but still, there are people on the ship who are probably doing what I would be doing there right now. I mean, I don't think I have some kind of an exclusive set of skills up there that no one else could do that. So probably I would be contributing and helping, but to something that is already being done by them. It's not something unique, probably, that I would be dedicating myself to. So here for now, I feel there's something more unique that no one else is doing uh, from the team and Mari and Sael and Ali and that's a part of course that's from the ship but being here and establishing this foundation physically on earth of this communication and being in touch with people directly and you know touching the ground riding on a metro it's something it's something unique so I think I, I feel more valuable doing this for now from here than if I was there. Is the question about their 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 look? Why is they look young? Or why are the young numbers wise? Well if it's about the appearance, they all look like that always you could be even 500 years old and you'll still look in your 20s they don't get old in the same a the same way they don't get they don't age unless they want to we were told that some people maybe want to look a bit older sometimes it happens with the men sometimes even with women but usually they don't age and if it's a uh, the the question about the numbers well usually it's the young idealistic crew that is here young idealistic 
Tigetans that appear and they want to participate in these expeditions, helping older people they devote to other activities. However, fun fact, they told me that actually I, there, I'm actually one of the oldest one there. Because I'm about 135 years old. There. Yes, yeah, so if I ever go up there, I'll be among the oldest ones. Um, no, I don't think it had to do with countries. It just it had to do with the uh, people that I happened to meet and these types of people uh, that are attuned with you are can be found anywhere. So nothing to do with the country. I didn't notice any specifics about the country itself. But I did find a group in Australia when I was there between 2003-2005 and that's a fairy society. And they were the extraterrestrial group but also super 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 metaphysical and I loved it and this was the group that so far I felt most attuned with before this whole this contact started so if you are interested look it up a fairy society uh, so that's it that was in Australia Uh, Robert always explains himself that he is a walking, uh, that he walked in 2008. And he explains the story in detail many times in Spanish. I know it hasn't been probably explained in English. I am unable to retain all those details. But he claims that he walked in, in 2008. And he has a memory of the, of the switch and he remembers himself as a, as a light blue being in a Lurian body so he believes that's his race that's where he's coming here here from um, however there's no information about him being in immersion he himself doesn't know that he just feels and knows that he's a walking soul and they so they say they don't know anything about him specifically No, uh, they haven't. Uh, they don't have a specific plan in action, like you know, a specific goal in that sense. Like this is where we are taking this. This is the goal. I don't have any specific goal, even though, of course, you know, some sort of open, direct disclosure type of a program and a counter would be nice maybe in the beginning that's what Svaru Overa was hinting at then that that's that's the aim but there is no none the way I understand it now it's just to keep helping and seeing how things unfold there cannot be a specific goal like that because that would imply them knowing what's going to happen and they don't know they just adjust to the situation at hand and that's how it is now I am not aware of any astral visitation uh, to Toleka it could be happening but I'm just not conscious of it in fact at one time I asked Yaski I think if she saw me if she sees me in her astral travels I think she said no that she hasn't encountered me yet there okay Bongi this way <laughs> I checked my playlist, my video list, and the most played video with the most um, views <laughs> is the one about 
how to be a 5D person, one of the early ones. And then also the truth about the Federation, that one, Ponkish. <laughs> and uh, for some reason, this way, Bongi, also Enki and Enlil, the one we did before. Now, which one I think is the most important one? It's impossible to choose just one, of course. You know I would say that. But I think the very first series on mechanics of manifestation and stellar navigation, the first ones by Zvaru. Of course, all the... <sighs> Of course, the one given by Aneka, the Titan Lab report, that was very important. It's on Odyssey. I think yes, he wants on there is no death, there is no matter. Those ones. Etc. But there are many it's hard to choose. I feel various emotions, various emotions about this. First, is I will start from the most neutral one. I feel nothing. Nothing. And by that I mean that I'm simply doing the videos at home and normally I don't have any interaction with people outside. So I'm just from one video to another and, and that's it. I don't know how it affects people. <laughs> just what I see from comments. Okay, but then when I finally realize how much it affects people, or if it does, if it doesn't, if I see some kind of comments and reactions and all that, then I feel, yeah, very realized, very, very fulfilled, happy, because in some way I always wanted to do that. And then I also feel um, like disbelief, still very much, uh, very, very, very strong disbelief that this is happening. <laughs> And then the fourth emotion is big sense of responsibility. So I feel very, like, a lot of, yeah, a responsibility to do this. To do this right and to do this, yeah. These would be four different things, major things that came to my mind. Well, uh, this is actually interesting because um, we never made that petition first, from what I remember, and I think I remember it clearly. It was, of course, it is a petition now, yes, but in the beginning, it didn't even occur to me. Uh, I wasn't thinking about that. I didn't know it was a possibility. And I remember that Zvaru of Herda and later Yashi were like dropping hints about it. Maybe like to see our reaction, uh, if what, what, I, what I would say, like they would drop hints about, about that possibility. Uh, for example, when we were going from Spain to Finland, it was going north. So I was saying, and now I do not remember, do not remember exactly the, situ the situation and the conversation, but I said something like, okay, so we're, we are going north now, more north than we were. And yes, he says something like, yeah, and one day, even may, maybe even more north, if you are interested. And I said, more, more north? Yeah, up, more up or something, more north, more up, up and up and up. And I said, you mean to your ship? And she said, yeah, why not? If you want to, or something like that. You see, it was like given by them, little by little, those ideas, the ideas were like inserted in our mind, the possibility. So yeah, when I then realized it's a, po it's a possibility, we talked about this uh, with them more clearly uh, from all different angles, even like w what our rooms uh, will be like, uh, what we would like to have in our room and where we would like to be, what it's going to be like. And so, yeah, what did they say? They said, yes, it's, it's possible. Um, of course, now it's difficult uh, I know that the subject of extractions is something difficult, but I'm okay with that because I'm not in a rush. Um, I want to be here as much as uh, possible, in a way, as much as uh, for as long as I'm needed to do something. And I feel 
I am still uh, useful here on Earth. I am acquiring a lot of interesting experience and information from this place. So I'm not in a rush, but yes, uh, they told us it's possible. So one day I would like that. No, obviously not. They are not allowed by the Federation rules, of course, to be introducing any outside stuff like that, even though we know they do that all the time. So no, it was in English and uh, one time I think in Spanish, Robert was present. Actually, it's a good question. It's a question that Matthias also asked me a few weeks ago. Um, I see it this way. I still have a lot of material to share. So that's one. I have to share what I have to share still. Two, it's for Yasi and Athena to express themselves if they have something to say here. So we're open to that always. Three, I feel that our role, Robert and I, is making it all quite tangible to the people. So, for example, Mari is doing a great job and her information is amazing, but at this point it's still um, a YouTube channel, a, a YouTube voice, uh, there is like no one to look at like physically no one to speak for them physically and we are that that we are that physical uh, tangible something that can speak for them that can share thoughts about them who can look at our face our our body language and have someone say look there is this channel and i know these people and i know Mari and I know Yasi and and we can share more about that. So it becomes a little bit more uh, tangible for people and also I think we give a little bit more credibility this way because with us being credible, I want to believe trustworthy people, people can look at us and see we are not lying, we are not inventing this, we are passionate about this and they are our friends and this way we give credibility by being how we are to the whole project. So this is what we contribute. Also next, our role is to provide more like a social media coverage. Um, being their media, so to speak. So talking about this, about this in interviews, making public appearances and spre spreading the information about them existing, about Mari and Zael existing there. Because they cannot do that for themselves. So that's another layer of the role. And another role here, and I feel it's very important as well, is provide this link between the minds of humans and the stellar. Uh, because Mari, that's great, gives a lot of information and for sure many times you can capture telepathically what people are asking or wondering about I know that happens but still we are like sometimes the voice of the people verbalizing their core concerns and questions so we have sort of a bridge us being humans and star seeds here ourselves so we are like representing people's minds in a way of course not everybody's for sure everybody has their own different questions and line of thought but in a way yes so yeah all these different uh, roles here to play and also finally i think there's going to be still a lot to do in the future who knows what they might need uh it's not that i'm going to leave them to their own resources mari to do everything on her own on her shoulders and you know whatever else they will need to do in the future i'm not just going to leave them with that those you know fluffy bunnies <laughs> some of them are cold but they would need all the help they need 
um, it's, it's, it's everybody's job. It's their job and it's our job, especially our job here, to, uh, to help. Anybody's help is, is necessary in whatever they can contribute. Well, we don't really know how many Svaros there are in other places and other so-called timelines. So it's hard to say why there are so many here if there could be maybe 10 in other places. Because as they themselves say about themselves, they, they just pop up like mushrooms and they travel and time travel and jump. So that, uh, I, well, but I think it is an important point right now because there is that you know, unknown of the humanity future, it could go many ways. So it attracts Zvarus because they like to contribute and they like to be in those moments of history where there is some kind of a decisive situation happening. And will there be or could there be more Zvarus? Always. <laughs> I would say, yes, why not? But not Zvaru 13, because as Yaski herself explains, there will be no more Zvaru 13, it's like she's the, the last one, that's what she says in that sequence of things. Well, we did say that they were living, they live up to 1000 years, more or less, but that's like linear terrestrial calculations because how do you really calculate time there it's totally different so it was just given that number was given more or less approximate to give you an idea that they live much uh, look at those shoes they're really cool for snow uh, to give you an idea that the boggy to give you an idea that they live much much longer more or less 10 times longer Come on, Bongo, it's, it's late and there's all kinds of garbage on the street that is not cleaned yet and Bongo is taking advantage I'm talking and she's looking for food. Okay, that's it, for scraps. Well, I was thinking about it for a while, how to respond to this. And I have no one specific moment. I divided this into three situations, which is first, Aneka's death. It was quite shocking and challenging. Then, of course, the infiltration situation. Just a bit stressful at that time to have to deal with that. However, I must say that actually, what I think the most challenge, what most challenged my mind were different metaphysical twists and turns along the way. Of which, unfortunately, I know it sounds enigmatically, but I cannot go into that much because it's their personal stuff. But it was just quite metaphysical for just to say something, to use a term. Because here, maybe it's not normal, this situation because we are living here in a different reality, different perception of how things should be. But there, some of these things happen, temporal changes. And so it was a bit challenging for, the, for our human 3D, in a way, mind. We had to like expand our limits of what's normal for the reality. Even though some of these things were not even normal there, they were even challenging for the Tegans. So I must say, these situations I would find most challenging, even more than like enemies and infiltration, because that's just something, it's not really challenging for the perception. It's just stressful, but that's it. Sometimes stressful, sometimes not even that. You deal with it and you move on. Okay. All right, important, very, very, very important uh, about that challenging metaphysical moment, the moments 
Yes, challenging, but also super liberating. That's very important. Challenging may be at first because, you know, it's kind of like shatters the constructs of a 3D mind, but then super expanding and liberating. So more of them, bring them on.